And go live. We're there. Hi, guys. Hey, are we on? We're live. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you can't find us on the app. All right. Well, that's um, a, uh, there we go. Now we're live. Okay. All right, there now we we're live. Guess what? It's time for Bollocks Talks and Tangents. Oh, it's six thirty-four. I'm topless. I got Lenny in the studio <laughs> with me. I got a man in there. We got drinks. We're talking and what? we're just chatting away. I don't know if what? we were oh. chatting while we were live or not. No, so. the pre-show. What so are the... you doing? Lenny's undressing well, over here. You know, if you're going, if you're <laughs> going topless, <laughs> Lenny, come oh, on, no. man, keep your keep put it away, I'm dude. I'm just not wearing a hat. There's oh, a girl in the studio. Button up. Oh gosh, this is woman. It's not we're, woman. We're not watching the sunset at Mike's house. Leave your clothes <laughs> on. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, it's time for us to get started in bollocks, and I'm going to share here in a little bit. And if you're already there, please hit I that share button. Uh, what's that? <laughs> I can teach you how. Yeah, Lenny, if you don't mind, <laughs> you don't mind. I, I was looking. That's, that's the feeble leading the feebler. I, I was I was looking for it, and yeah, I did not find it at all. So we're, I'm going to have to go back out and come back in. Um, but we got a great show. It's a, an EGOT show, and if you don't know what an EGOT is, you're about to find out what an EGOT is, and it's not an animal. It's not a bird. So I think when I asked two people today, they like, oh, is that some kind of bird? No, that's an egret. All right. <laughs> an egot. And I'm. We're going to do this, Lynn. There okay. You there you I'm go. telling you, my boy. These I mean, are is, that, is that okay? Yeah, we got you. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, and, and I keep. There's, there's a, a hallucinogenic disease or, or hallucinogenic episode you can get from ergots. Not egot, ergot. It's, it's a, a gray mold. A grain mold. Right. I think it's an ergot. Thanks for taking us there. And um, Is that responsible for the witch trials? Possibly, yeah. It yeah, looks some of it like for sure. The yes, rye absolutely. Seed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. A grain mold. Yeah. Okay. They look like rye seeds. Yeah. All right. yeah. So they were mixed up with the rye seeds and they were giving people hallucinate hallucin whatever. Hallucinations. Hallucinations. Right. That, yeah. yeah. And Woo! so then um, they were seeing witches and accusing people of being witches because of the the mold. Yep. Okay. That's 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 what they're blaming. Yeah. Well. It, it, yeah. That's what Michael Crichton blamed. I heard it was batshit. It was a cheap <laughs> cheap buzz. Or, well, or just crazy. crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think they're all just batshit crazy. Just batshit crazy. So hey, I I just want to say thank you, Amanda. Thank you for being in the studio with us. We got a fun fun show. Um, I've enjoyed doing the research on this one. I I always kind of enjoy the research, mm -hmm. and sometimes I go. Yeah, we probably shouldn't have done that one. Um, <laughs> but I didn't on this one. I didn't on this one at all. And and he got is a, a person that's won an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. But right. have any of those people sponsored our show? <laughs> um, no, but we'll talk to them. Okay. There's a couple of them that, are st that still have a chance. Okay. So, um, you know, they, I, I, I found some of them very interesting. Some of them got it very young. Yes. And then some it took an entire career and lifetime. Some got it when they was dead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one, of, one of the ones on my list. Mm -hmm. they, they, they were, they were uh, swimming with the worms or whatever it is. <laughs> Fishes. <What do> you... <laughs> right. Yeah. Leave the Italians out of worm, worm, please. They were worm, worm food. There you go. They were worm food. <laughs> um, but we're going we're gonna to start off with uh, going through our sponsors real quick. Um, uh, this this group, the St. Augustine Distillery and Citygate Spirits, St. Augustine Distillery just won top distiller. I think it's called the Bottle Cap Award um, uh, mm -hmm. for best distillery in the country. Yeah. So congratulations to the St. Augustine Distillery. I don't think you would have done it if you didn't sponsor Bollocks, but you know that's just me. Right. I, I, well, it helps. You know, I, I, that's just that's just. Us. It's our cachet led, added to their cachet. Yeah, they're like, oh, you sponsor that show, then mm -hmm. you're good. Mm -hmm. All right, because. Nobody knows bourbon like th those guys and ladies. All right. <laughs> Except for um, us. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Me Hands Irish Pub. Just uh, Reggie, just I passed him the other day on the street. Just yeah. the nicest guy in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you can talk to him all day long. He has an amazing, amazing restaurant over there. 
Uh, great uh, Irish whiskey selections, one of the biggest in the entire country. state or country. Country. Uh, the Irish cream is to die for. Magnificent. And, and Blake Blake absolutely loves, and he is an aficionado on mac and cheese. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they, they just have wonderful food and just great people. Always, oh my gosh, sound off! <laughs> Come on, Boomer. How did that happen? Uh, it's a rough start. We got. I, this. Have, any, I have too much blood in my alcohol system. Let's do this. To your Amanda, health, where, my friend. Oh, where are you at, Amanda? To your health. Right here. There you got there the you cheers go. right there. Thank you. Mm. Oh, good stuff. You know, places have wine lists that are, you know, pages and pages long. Mm -hmm. Meehan's has an Irish whiskey list that's pages long. Yeah. No, it's It's fascinating what they have. It's just a great, I mean, and they do such a nice job. Um, And it it gives you confidence because Meehan's is a place that shuts down and does a deep, deep clean, you know. Like four times a year. Yeah, I was going to say three to four times a year. And, you know, when somebody does that, they're making sure that they're giving you the best quality mm-hmm. out there. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, highest quality CPA in town, A Bear, Kresge and Associates. Um, Billy's been my guy for a long, long time. I'm not an easy guy to be an accountant for, by the way, <laughs> just in case you guys were wondering. <laughs> I'm actually not an easy guy to do no anything way. with. Um, but to be my accountant <laughs> is really, really a challenging job. And he handles it um, as a professional. He's like, no, we can't do that. Do they bill you by the LLC or they just give you a blanket bill? I, 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 well, I, I, I think there's an entertainment value with it. Okay, I, I'm sure of that. I, I think there might be a, a, a video on how to handle difficult clients that I'm involved in. Um, you know, but nobody, nobody's better than these guys. A. Bear Kresge and Associates, best CPAs in town. All right, St. Augustine Pirate Museum. Maeve and I went there uh, just last weekend. Uh, just always have a blast in there. We have a wonderful time. We got a great gift shop. Um, over 800 artifacts. We sat down in front of the little computer, and her and I were just hitting every different pirate, looking at the different flags, and it's yeah. just really, really a cool experience. It's a learning experience. And if you haven't been, you got to make make a way over to uh, St. Augustine Pirate Museum. I think we're um, a week or so away from Talk Like a Pirate Day. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what today right. is? Yeah. Yeah. So. I think it's like September 18th. Today's possibly. Dolphin yeah. Day. Today's Dolphin, dolphin, dolphin day? day? Yes. Talk okay. like a dolphin? I haven't interposed that yet, but yeah, today's um, International Dolphin Day. Okay, but we don't have to talk like a dif- dolphin because that's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. That's going to be challenging to get through this show. With that, Absolutely. With that. Who grew up watching Flipper? I yeah, did. Yeah. yeah. So. I played young. with I dolphins. I remember young. Flipper. Yeah, For a she, job. She was a, she yeah. was a, a dolphin <laughs> trainer. Wow. So. Um, and I Sit. and I like the, I like the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, so that's got to count for something. Playing tonight, by the way. Yeah, get home early. Yeah, yeah, we got to get out of here, man. For they're playing they're Buffalo. Play- uh, I'm not sure if they're home or in Buffalo. They're in. They're in Miami. Okay, they're in Miami. Um, so uh, Matt's starting to. I'm starting Hill. Mm-hmm. Just for just for you fantasy football fans okay. out there. Ty- Tyree Kill. Yeah, Tyree Kill for sure. And Did you I watch guess- the video? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Roll down your window. Yeah, he was. He was. Stubbornly non-compliant. He didn't come off great. The cops didn't come off great. You know, he realized after the fact. He said, "I could have handled it differently." Um, but you got to understand your your location. Yeah, you're in Miami. You're driving a three hundred thousand dollar car with blacked with out windows. Blacked out windows. Yeah. And the guy's telling you to roll down your window. You're not doing anything wrong. Roll down your window because you're in Miami. Right. Only two types of people drive those types of cars: professional athletes. And drug dealers. And he was two blocks from the stadium. So Yeah. You know, that sounds so like profiling. I mean, just roll down your window. Right, absolutely. Yeah. No, I was you know, when I saw the video, I was going, Tyreek, you know, mm-hmm. grow up. Yeah. And and, and I, I think he realized you know, that in and, and, and for those people that are trying to make it a race thing, you know what? Yeah. Go back two months. Scotty Scheffler is <laughs> The pastiest white dude in the world, and he went to jail. Right. So don't right. let's not go there with that. Just comply with the police. Say yes, sir. No, sir. Right. They have a tough enough job. You're making forty million dollars a year, giving a guy a hard time who's putting his life on the line for you for sixty thousand dollars a year. Right. If he handled so, it like an adult, he would have gotten an escort to the stadium. And I, I'm a huge, I'm a huge Tyree. I think he's talented, great, and talented. talented. But yeah, come on, don't. That's not fair. But I was pleased to see. I mean, in Drew Rosenhaus, his 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 agent is making it, you know, a federal case. Mm-hmm. But I do like the fact that after the fact, Tyreek Hill admitted the fact that 
He could have handled it differently. He didn't. He he realized after the fact that he was in the wrong. He wasn't forgiving the cop at all, mm-hmm. um, which, you know, they were a little overly aggressive too. But, you know, it's hard to put yourself in the position of the police officer you, when you you've got know. somebody in a car with a blacked out window. You know, why, that's frightening. Why, why wouldn't he just roll down his window? Exactly, exactly. You know, if that's nothing, no, nothing to hide, I don't understand why he wouldn't. His answer and, was, you know, I'm a celebrity. I'm two blocks from the stadium. There's fans there. I didn't want to be on TikTok and Instagram and on Guess in what? everybody's video. Guess what? Now you are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're Big definitely time. gonna you're Big definitely time. gonna get yep. it on there. Yep. Yep. So, um, you know, I and I think the way they handle this is gonna determine endorsements for Tyreek and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll have to tell you this: his touch touchdown celebration was a little funny with the handcuff with, with where he put it behind and, and waddle and waddle yeah, put it yeah, behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so, inspired by the Florida Man games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe we can get him to enter. He did to catch him. Here's here's the thing. The fastest guy in the NFL couldn't evade. So I mean, <laughs> that shows you what a great Cops challenge. every time. What a great challenge the evading yep, the rest yep. is. So, all right. Um, some, of those, some of those deputies were taking it really seriously and were not happy when one or two guys actually yeah, one, beat one guy got Yeah, one yep. guy got away. I and think only one escaped. Was pissed. Yeah. We're going to have to make it a little, uh, a little harder on the law enforcement this upcoming year uh, for the Florida Man Games. All right, Kaiser's Deli and Market. I ate there today. I feel bad. We didn't give you a call. Lynn. That's all right. Yeah, so I, I, we, we were already mid sandwich. We're like, did you call any? I didn't call any. You call any? Mm-hmm. Like, we still love you. It's all right. I, and and uh, I did have the bollocks pressed with the pastrami. With the pastrami, excellent. Half and half excellent pastrami choice. and turkey. Amazing, amazing sandwich. Um, but they got all the all the fresh cuts over there. Uh, some people are nervous about delis and boar's head. Uh, everything has been it's, it's all uh, fresh. Re- restored, it's all fresh refreshed, and, safe. and completely safe. Um, amazing, amazing food. Just a wonderful. I have a half a sandwich at home waiting for me. And so I'm telling you, you, can, get two, you can get two meals out of it for, for sure. The football game, it, you know, it's, it's there. And and if you want to do a, a, a college football or a Sunday football little fiesta. Um, he's got some great dips that Julie ma- Julia makes. Okay. Um, there's onion dip. There's uh, a fromage dip. He's got salads. He's got some really good stuff that What's you can add. What's a fromage dip? Fromage dip is it's like a cheese dip. Okay. It's it's just. Why wouldn't you, you say know, cheese dip? Because fromage sounds so much classier, language. and we're fans of Jack Papon. For, uh, fromage sounds like it's been eaten once. Fromage is French oh, for oh, cheese. Fromage is French it? for cheese. Yeah. What is it? It's French fromage, for cheese. Yeah. It's French for cheese. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fromage. Oh my gosh! So it's a quitter cheese. It's. <laughs> they don't even start the game. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we quit. All, right. All I can say is, if the bada bing takes me out, it was meant to be. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. it's worth it. Yeah. yeah. Oof, so that is a big ass sandwich. All right. No, it's amazing. Amazing food. Um, all right. Uh, last but definitely not least, Coquina Coast Realty. Give me a call, 904-669-7901. Um, I have uh, some office space available on the commercial side if you're looking for office space. Uh, two separate buildings, and I have another building that will be coming online at the very beginning of the year with a lot of space there. If you're looking for commercial space, if you're wanting to sell a house, or if you're looking for an apartment, Give me a call again. Number is 904-669-7901. All right. Enough about me. Enough about that. Um, word origins. Do well, you have a word origin today? I do. And for the first time in weeks and weeks and weeks, it has absolutely nothing to do with EGOTs. It, it, well, it's it kind does, of hard to EGOT it. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I usually can link it up to our, our topic. But for some reason, three days ago, the word ointment got in my head. Ointment? Ointment. Okay. Ointment. It's sort of like moist, but different. No, ointment. Yeah, ointment. Okay. Yeah, so for whatever some... reason, I wanted to look it up and make that my word origin. Yeah, put some ointment on and exactly. make your feet nice and moist. Exactly. Got it. So um, ointment is a salve or an unguent for application to the skin. Okay, we know what an ointment is, but right. where did the word come from? <laughs> it came from Middle English in the 14th century, mm-hmm. from the Anglo-French. <coughs> Pardon me, from... It's, it, it was from ointment, O Y N E M E N T. Okay. Ungument, U I G N E M M E N T. 
Argument. It's like it's all variations. Okay, please stop spelling. Okay, <laughs> you're hurting my brain. I'm dyslexic, and I'm trying to put those letters together. And you might as well just be like kicking me in the balls right now. So <laughs> don't, 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 don't spell up. things out loud. Stand up. Do you still have well, extra nuts? Yeah, you can. You can. You can stand on the table, and so you can. There you go. Yeah, we're not as so, slimber as we used to be. Not in the least. Oh my goodness. All right. Um, so it's it, it comes back to the Latin for um, unguamenten. Or unguer, which is to anoint. To anoint. Right. Okay, so the applying is to anoint it. Correct. It comes, okay. it, it's a variation right. of I that, you know, like a little olive oil on the, on the, the, the forehead for um, some church ceremonies. And then from scan, Sanskrit for ankti, A-N-A-K-T-I, and that's he solves. And that's not solves like as in a puzzle, but solves like as in... Um, Sabs, maybe. Sobs. Sobs, right. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. got it, got it. So that's it. I just yeah. so it's Sanskrit. I yeah. was thinking about getting a, a a Sanskrit tattoo on my neck right here. No one would know what it says. Make make wise choices. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, Lenny. You know, you know, I gotta tell you, the one the weirdest tattoo I ever saw, um, I took my nephew to the Intrepid Museum in Manhattan. It's an aircraft carrier on the Hudson River on a pier there. It's actually the one where a national treasure, um, uh, Nicholas Cage, jumps off to escape the FBI mm. to go entrap the bad guys. And we're there. And part of the display there is there's they got a little submarine. Mm -hmm. We go through the submarine. Is it yellow? No. Okay. No. It's tiny. But one of the most disconcerting things was, because you're in a submarine, so you've got to follow the person in front of you because there's not a lot of room. You're mm -hmm. just going down down the middle of the submarine. Yeah. And there was a woman in front of me who had a tattoo on the back of her neck, and it was a chai, which is the Jewish symbol for life and translates to 18. Not a chai. No, no. <laughs> C-H-A-I, -C I believe. Okay. okay. And, you know, what's the one rule of being Jewish? You can't have a tattoo. You don't get tattooed. Yeah. So I'm walking in the back of this woman, and she's got a Jewish symbol tattooed on the back of her neck. It was the most disconcerting thing I've ever seen. Well, I, I have a friend who's uh, half Jewish and half Italian. Hi there. So only only on half her body she has tattoos. Okay. So, <laughs> so she's like, not me. So I was like, I don't think that's the way that works, but we're right. going to go with that. Fair <laughs> enough. But, uh, but she's left... I think the left. I'm not sure which side it is, but she's like, I'm just your not, left I, or her left. I, I, I <laughs> I, 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 Depends I, which way you're facing. I really yeah. don't even know. Right. Um, but it's like, okay, all right, that that works. That's your logic. She really likes tattoos, but she okay. wants to. She only does it on one side. She wants to respect her grandmother. Good for her. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, um, I would argue people in Hollywood know a lot about ointments, so you still tied it into the theme. Oint, yeah, fair enough. Ointment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it's just it's just an interesting capital, word. Per capita ointment use is very high in L.A., I'm, I'm sure. Guessing. <laughs> it's also an interesting word to say, ointment. Ointment. Yes. All right. Ointment is a... You, you got know, one? Uh, I got one. Okay. Yeah. You uh, had an ointment? Yeah. So I, I got several. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to talk about it. Uh, all right. Um, just, just sell it on. Here we go. We're talking about tattoos, which kind of goes with this, and it is the word graffiti. So when I was thinking L.A., I was thinking graffiti. There you go. Uh, and I was like, oh, this is a great word because I like the way the word, the origin came from. Mm -hmm. And it came uh, from the Italian word for pottery. It means to scratch. So the old potters used to scratch art into the potters. And then the poorer people would scratch it on the walls mm -hmm. and do that because they didn't have pottery to scratch on. And that is where it's an Italian word to scratch is graffiti. And some of the oldest graffiti they've found is in and around the Forum in Rome and in Italy back in the Roman days. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about this just before the show started. And a lot of it was pornographic. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It was various, various and sundry body parts. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it was blank pics before yeah. there was blank pics. Right. <laughs> exactly. So I'm doing, I'm teaching Western cultural art and music mm -hmm. to a bunch of 15 and 16 year olds. And we're watching a video series about it. And without warning, it just busts out with a penis mosaic that has been uncovered mm -hmm. in like ancient Greece or ancient Rome. And I've got a room full of 15 and 16 year old boys and girls. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it's just this giant penis mosaic. And it's like, and the art turned decidedly phallic. <laughs> and the kids are all like, Ooh, we're in a church watching this video yeah. and this giant penis pops up. Hey, as long yeah. as the roof didn't cave in, you were covered. <laughs> we're good. Yeah. Lightning. 
<laughs> no lightning. All right. So I thought it was today, and it was on this day in history. Um, and, it, and and we're talking about graffiti. Mm. Um, what is it? Les K. Uh, K paintings. Oh, in France. Yeah, they yeah, were. They I can were never di- pronounce that. La- were, yeah. Do you know how to pronounce it? It's L A S C A U X. Yeah, last K. And like you, you can't spell it to me. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're the same as me. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm not alone. So yeah, it was in France, but it was the first like cave drawings mm-hmm. of primitive man and paintings, and they and were animals, in color yeah. and animals and yeah, very few phallic things, but you know. You know I would some. guess Lacau. Lacau. Okay. Yeah, and and I think I, I I'm not positive about this, but I think I read in the last year or so that they actually created a copy of that for the public to go see. They they fabricated copies of the cave paintings mm-hmm. because the original was suffering from light and light. smoke and people. Yeah, and it, I mean we're talking seventeen thousand years ago. Yep. So the first yep. graffiti. Yep. So I, well, I, that was art back then because they yeah. were they were just you know they were memorializing. Well, they were scratched that. in. Yeah. Okay. But they were scratched okay. in, so you know yeah. they got I got to call, call it graffiti because you know, graffiti and it was artists, in France, not Italy, though. You know, graffiti artists now are you know big business, and I'm not even talking about um, what's his face um, Banksy, mm-hmm. but you, you know there's. You know, in L.A. and a lot of cities, you know, Miami, you go down to Wind or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. There, there's um, walls and walls and walls of graffiti and street art that is magnificent. Mm-hmm. And they bring in graffiti artists to do that with their spray paints and things of that nature. No, they're, they're, I mean, it's you, impressive how they can see the canvas yep. and make it happen. All right, you said Miami. Miami. Do you realize that the term EGOT came out of? I do. Miami Vice. Yep. Nice. Did you see that? No, I didn't. 1984. Philip Michael Rico Tubbs, baby. Yeah. (laughs) Philip Michael Thomas, right? Correct. Yes, sir. The man with three first names. Yep. Um, The day I met Cool, when I worked with Cool, um, I was helping represent a a master chef, uh, Johnny Rivers. And Johnny invited me down to Orlando. And anytime Johnny Johnny invites you, he's, he's one of the, he is the only. Or at least he was at the time. I don't know if he still is. He was the only black master chef in the entire world. There's only like 53 master chefs in the entire world. But anytime uh, Johnny invites you to lunch, you go to oh, lunch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we get there, and uh, I'm sitting beside Cool, who, who, who is a wonderful man. He's playing in Daytona soon. Um, and uh, Philip Michael Thomas. Mm-hmm. and. And I, I meet him, and I'm trying to recognize and put it together and, and figure out who he was. I knew who Cool was right away. But I didn't realize that Philip Michael Thomas is the one who came up with the term EGOT. And he said he wanted to have an EGOT in five years. Right. Never, never got one. Never achieved it. <laughs> never, I don't think he got close. I think he got an Emmy. Maybe. I think he got an Emmy. And his daughter was an <coughs> amazing singer, and he was trying to get the people I was working for yeah. to... Uh, Repar, Repar, yeah. represent the daughter uh she was a very good singer but he was the one miami vice mm-hmm. is where we got the term he got right so philip which is, which is and by the way he looks he's still this was probably eight ten years ago still looks the exact same yeah yeah and and he did that in 1984 and the first he got was accomplished um in 1962 yep so it existed before there was even a term for it correct so, no, and it was Richard Rogers. Rogers. Yep. Okay, he was a composer. Yeah. And 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 uh, you know, when I think of composers, I thought easily uh, Hammerstein. Didn't get it. Would have one. He was one short. Well, and and don't forget, Richard Rogers worked with Hammerstein, and then they worked with Hart. Yeah. So it was Rogers and Hart, and Rogers and Hammerstein. Yeah. So he, you know, switched off partners. Um, a lot of interest. You know, there's a Pigot. Is that a Pulitzer? Or a, um, a a Pulitzer or a Peabody, yes. Okay. Yeah. So there's a couple of those floating around. There's a double E got. Guy that wrote Avenue Q has has accomplished it twice, and that's um, Robert Lopez. In 2014, he got a double E got. I think the guy wrote the song for Frozen. Mm-hmm. He wrote the the book for um, Book of Mormon and Avenue Q. So yeah. All right. Here here's some. Um some people that still have a chance. Uh, I went to uh, 
the the people that had three. three. Yeah. All right. The one that caught me off guard was Cindy Lauper. Oh. She doesn't have an Oscar, believe it or not. I can believe that. She doesn't have an Oscar. All right. The person I feel that has a chance, very a very good chance of getting an EGOT that's on this list without an Oscar is Hugh Jackman. I believe. Oh, talented, talented man. Yeah, very talented man. Uh, so my, to do TV. My favorite guy on the three list is Dick Van Dyke, and yeah. he never got an Oscar. You know the surprising one, though? I find a share. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So she, mm. she doesn't have a Tony? I think that's um, the one she's missing. Okay. That would make sense, because she probably got something for the, the theater yeah, share, seems the variety like a good show. fit for her, though. I'm yeah. sorry? The theater seems like a good fit for her, though. That yeah. seems eminently attainable for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and well, she better hurry up. Well, here, yeah. I mean, here, you know, she's getting tired with all her 24-year-old boyfriends. Can you get a Tony for a Vegas show? Yeah, probably so. Yeah. No. You, probably, you probably can't. No. You can't? No. It's you got to be Broadway? It's Broadway, yeah. It's only Broadway. Yeah, yeah. All right. Here, here's one that I think has a shot of getting an EGOT that doesn't, that's only missing the Tony. And Cher's only missing a Tony. Right. Another one of my favorite people only missing a Tony, George Burns. I don't, um, he ain't going to get it. Yeah, I don't think he's going to get it. You know, well, but they the could person, already happen to him. The person I think has a shot on this list is Common. So okay. Common has everything except the Tony. Very good actor. I can very see him good on singer. stage, for sure. I can see him on stage, you know, if the role is proper. And in... Because when Mae met him, she was very polite, and she called him Mr. Common. <laughs> <laughs> she called him Uncommon? Yeah, Mr. Mister Common. And Good I'm for sorry for all the people that didn't get in to see Common that night, because he only accepted our group. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, alphabetically, Blevins was up front. Um, <laughs> so everybody in our like- group... He could yeah. totally get a part in Hamilton. He's a rapper. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, he could Hamilton, totally get Tony. He, he Raising has, in the Sun, has, any yeah. August Wilson show, mm-hmm. he's or a, anything else. He's a great actor and a great singer. So I see, you know, in my mind, him making it just go. I, I want to call him and go, hey, you know, you're only this far <laughs> away. Totally I don't even know from, if he knows. Right. Lynn manuel let's go. He was, I mean, yeah. very, very kind man, very giving man, super nice to Maeve. We enjoyed our time with him, but I think Common could be the one on those three lists. Mm-hmm. The other one on the three lists that I don't see happening, I don't see Eminem winning a Tony. Slim Shady for, yeah. for, for a Tony? Yeah. I, I mean, feel unless, like he could. Unless 8 Mile goes, goes to Broadway. I mean, oh, he's still young. Stuff. He's yeah. like my age. I could see him getting older and being like, okay, I can't pull off 75-year-old rapper from Detroit, so let's go to the... The stage. I yeah, can see him doing does that. Does he act? Yeah. I mean, I yeah, know eight, he was eight, in eight, 8 Mile. 8 Mile was a movie, but that was, you know. I think he has a few other cameos and other things. Yeah. All right. he, was, he was big at the VMAs last night. Mm-hmm. Two, two, Beatles, two Beatles have three but don't have a Tony. All right? That's okay. weird. That's Ringo and Paul. Paul. Yeah. They're both still with us, but right, they don't the have, a, they don't have yeah. a Tony. All right. Another person that I think has a shot at, uh, at is Kate Winslet. She doesn't have a Tony. She I can, can see do her doing that. Broadway. Yeah, I think yeah. she can pull it off. So Common and you know, if if there's a line in Vegas, my money's on Kate Winslet and Common being the next he got. Kate okay. Winslet sings a lot in Sense and Sensibility. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think she could pull that off. You very, know, very talented. So there was a, a trifecta at one point in time, and somebody that you wanted to bring up, John Legend, mm-hmm. got his Tony. I believe he was the first black man to receive a Tony. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he got, I'm sorry. Um and he got his in, in, where was he? Where's Johnny Boy? John, uh, John, 2018. Well, the one that but, caught but me off know, guard was, I, I didn't realize he got his Oscar very, very early in glory. Yes, for, with Common. Yeah. That's where Common got his Oscar. Yep. But, but John Legend got his Emmy for um, Jesus Christ Superstar um, Live in Concert. And the kick with that is Tim Rice and Andrew Lloyd Webber, who wrote Broadway show and, and music and hit after hit, mm-hmm. they also they were the producers of Jesus Christ Superstar um, in concert, live in concert. That's when like NBC was doing these, you know, would do live broadcasts of The Sound of Music, mm-hmm. and they did Jesus Christ Superstar, and John Legend was in that. And um, it, won the, it won the Emmy. 
And when it won the Emmy, Tim Rice, Andrew Lloyd Webber, and John Legend all received their EGOT because that was the only one the three of them were missing. So yeah. it was one show, one Emmy, got three people EGOTed. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and uh, John Legend ended up getting three more Emmys uh, for daytime Emmys. Yeah. So he, he ended up in 19. He got uh, Outstanding Interactive Media and Daytime Program called Crow the Legend. Yeah. I'm and then he, then he had an Outstanding Daytime Special called Shelter Me, a Soul. Um, and then he had, so he's actually on the Emmy side, he's got four credits right. for Emmys. Um, plus a bunch of Grammys. Yeah. Plus a ton of Grammys. Um, the other one, the for? young, young one that really, really caught me off guard. And I was like, how did, how has she even been around that Tony long? Tony was best revival for August Wilson's Jitney in 2017. Okay, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, that was um, Jitney. so the song was glory. It was in right. the movie. Selma was his Oscar. Oh, it was in right. Selma. Yeah. Oh, so okay. the movie yeah, was, was he, he, okay. Selma. His right. song was Connor. glory. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I was trying to put that timeline together and I was yeah. like, okay, that movie came out way before 2015. Yeah. Okay. That's what it was. Yeah, in, in, in my brain, in my autistic my my uh, dyslexic world, I was like that doesn't add up, right. and I couldn't I couldn't put the year with it because I went straight to the movie Glory. Yeah. So thank you for clearing mm-hmm. that up. Um, but the one that really caught me off guard and I didn't realize she had been around this long is Jennifer Jerry Hudson. Hyde. Oh yeah, and she she, well, she won, was young in Dreamgirls. Yeah, she she won in two thousand seven in Dreamgirls as best supporting actress. Mm-hmm. Wasn't that um, her first movie? And, and, you know, so I, I really was caught off guard. I didn't see her uh, as being, being an e-gotter. Yeah, and she got it in 2022. All right. And, and the other one who I don't think is extremely talented, but I, I guess I'm completely wrong, <laughs> is Whoopi. Oh, yeah. Whoopi. Whoopi. Well, she got robbed on Suster she Act. Got <laughs> supporting actress, she got supporting actress for Ghost. Yeah. That's her Oscar. Was it Ghost or was it? It was, it was for Ghost. ghost. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So right. See, that was a little bit controversial. Yeah. Um, her winning it because I can't remember who she was up against, but it was a little bit controversial that she was the one that won it. Um, it's not unusual for those to be controversial. Controversial though. The supporting actress. Yeah, best supporting actress in Ghost was mm-hmm. Whoopi. See, I loved her character in that, but I don't yeah. know if it was a challenge of a. Well, uh, of an it seemed acting. like her. Yeah. Yeah, just who she was. Yeah. She was quirky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've seen her in other roles that I feel like. So I, there are those redemption well, the color, options. Yeah. The color purple. The color purple, I yeah. feel like she totally got robbed way, on that. Yeah, way yeah, better. Serious gravitas there. And yeah. I think so that was a given, yeah. I think it was a redemption Oscar where okay. like, There's hey, we passed you over for color right. purple. Right. This was a good enough role that we can pass it by on this right. one we and you can get this your one through. We're sorry. Yeah. We owed you one. Yeah. It's, it's 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 like it's like in baseball when the the the, the home plate umpire makes a really lousy call, and, and then the next batter up gets a freaking cheesecake of a, of a, <laughs> yeah. of, a of a call. Yeah, you're 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 striking out. Yeah. You, you you go up there going, okay, I got to hit the first straight one I can reach because I'm striking out because yeah. it's a give back. Um, but uh, no, so I I didn't expect Whoopi, and I didn't when when you think of talented people and I and I saw Rob Robin Williams that. You know, obviously he's not going to win because he he didn't have a Tony. Um, I, I look at Robin Williams as one of the most talented people. That I love Robin Williams. That I that I I can imagine an entertainer, and you know I could just see him just crushing it mm-hmm. uh, on the stage. But he was such an ad libber. I don't know if a stage performance would work for him. Well, stand up well, comedy specials, they win. They can win on Tony. Yeah, okay. I think there's one or two that won it on a com- comedy special. So I well, think that that's I, an option. I, well, I, I, that's, I, yeah. I know Carlin. Carlin won a Grammy right. on his because uh, you know those those. Do you have to bring that up? What? You have to bring up George. <laughs> Did you Carlin? miss that? Yes, you missed that question. And you called music? me out on it. <laughs> oh. Yes. I can't believe you missed that. Best Supporting Actresses in 91. The nominees were Whoopi Goldberg for Ghost, Lorraine Bracco for Goodfellas, Annette Bening for Grifters, Mary McDonnell for Dances Dances with Wolves, and mm. Diane Ladd for Wild at Heart. Dances with Wolves, was she stands with Fist? Yeah, stands yeah. with Fist. That was a great performance. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I, so I, I can see them saying she got robbed. Yeah. So yeah. The Whoopster. Yeah. Well, good for Whoop. But, you know, Robin she, Williams. If you, she's it, no longer on the View, right? 
Is she not? She's I think not she is. Is she going to renew? Yeah. I thought she wasn't renewing. Have you heard her explanation for why she chose Whoopi Goldberg as her stage name? No. Because she wanted a Jewish sounding name and because she toots a lot. <laughs> Literally why she picked her name. That's what she gassy. said. Yeah, she's gassy, so she picked Whoopi for Whoopi wrong. Cushion, Nothing. and she wanted to sound Jewish. Nothing yeah. wrong with a little gassy. Done her well. A gassy girl is not terrible. You know, you, you, you don't look want them to hold it in. They'll be grumpy. <laughs> you look at Robin Williams' cinema work, his movie work, it's an amazing collection of films from crazy to just some of the deepest stuff what, out there. What is your favorite um, Robin Williams movie? Fisher King. Fisher King. Okay. We're watching my favorite Robin Williams dramatic performance for movies with Mike this month. So that's what dreams may come. Oh, it's that's a gorgeous deep. movie. That and, is deep. Mm-hmm. And that's, oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's, one that's the, sad. That's one. Yeah. That's one of those where I kind of wish I was stoned when I watched it. <laughs> you would be but, flying along with him. But it's so, <laughs> it's, it, it can get so deep and mm-hmm. so dark. Yeah. And yeah. it's a great, who, who picked that one? Mine. I oh, added it to okay, the wheel. Good, great choice. Great and choice. since yeah. that got picked, Mike insisted on doing two movies this month. So we're doing Top Gun and What Dreams May Come. <laughs> you know, and, and I will admit, I'm, I'm going to miss. That is horrible. I know. How do you even put those in the... That's horrible. It's Mike weird. Davis, Mike Davis should not be able to pick it. He shouldn't be on like a five-month... Like, I don't like no his pick. veto rule. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> terrible. That is awful. It is the Mike Davis show, however, yeah. so... How, but only on occasion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's true, too. That's true, too. Um, um, but, no, but you know... I, I, my, mine is Awakenings. Okay. And, that's and, a good one. And I, and I do love his character. I think he won a Golden Globe. Did he, I, did he win for Good Will Hunting? Um, I'll find it. I don't remember. You know, and I'm remiss. And I, but I, I think will he won a Golden publicly. Globe. I don't know if he won the uh, the Oscar for Best Supporting, but I can tell you, probably one of the best characters uh, ever done. I, everything he does is is you know I'm I'm this close to I haven't I haven't seen it yet, <clears throat> and I'm days away from watching Dead Poet Society. Mm. That's you know, good. I haven't, oh, I haven't seen my it captain. Yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he so won I'm an Oscar for Goodwill Hunting. Okay, it was his uh, best, uh, best supporting. Best supporting. Actor. Yeah. Then Screen Actors Guild for Birdcage. Fantastic uh, movie. Oh, love, love it. that movie. Uh, I Twilight, 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 Fosse, Fosse, Fosse. I just oh, showed God, Isabella that movie. It's great. Um, yeah. Grammy wonderful. for Good Morning Vietnam. He's won three. I'm only seeing that one um, first listed. Golden Globe Cecil B. DeMille Award. Uh, Screen Actors Guild, VMAs, He's missing the Tony. That's Golden Globe, Golden you Globe. You got Emmys yeah. for... You should just get an Emmy for being on Johnny Carson. Mork and Mindy. No, I think, oh, I think okay. he got an Emmy for Comic Relief. That would make sense with Billy and Whoopi. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's where Whoopi got yeah. hers, and I think that's where he oh, got... Billy Crystal, too, we, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, primetime think, Emmy. He won two primetime Emmys. Um, yeah. Let me see. Okay. So lots here, and lots. Here's a qualifier for you. Uh-huh. You know, we were talking earlier. I mentioned this guy Frank Marshall, who's mm-hmm. in the uh, alternate category of uh, EGOTs with non-competitive. Mm-hmm. You know, non-competitive EGOTs. Y- you win because you won in a competitive situation where you know you won an award, best supporting this, best supporting that, and it was a competition between other people in the Grammys and the Tonys and the Oscars and the Emmys, and. Um, there are some people, there are six of them, and, and we talked about this earlier. Barbara Streisand, Liza Minnelli, James Earl Jones, Harry Belafonte, Quincy Jones, and this gentleman, Frank Marshall, won theirs because they received honorary awards. Yes. So they received an Oscar. Like, like they received Lifetime a, Achievement exactly. Awards, things like that. Barbara Streisand got the Performer of the 70s. Mm-hmm. Liza Minnelli got a, a Lifetime Achievement Award. James Earl Jones, same thing. Harry Belafonte was the... Um, not the Gene Hurt. Oh yeah, the Gene Hershelt Award, um, and so is Quincy Jones. Um, actually, one of them got the Barbara, one of Barbara them got Jones. the uh, the Thalberg Award. Was this guy Frank Marshall? But yeah. Frank Marshall, yeah, his, his Barbara Emmy, got the special Tony for uh, Star of the Decade. Right, the seventies. Yeah, yeah. So that that's her her non compete. Right. Um, but this guy Frank Marshall. The question was his his Emmy was a sports Emmy. Mm-hmm. Does that does that take the 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 bloom off of the rose? Does that discount it? I mean, it's no. an Emmy's an Emmy. No, it's still it's, entertainment. Well, what about a daytime Emmy? Do they count? Yes, they okay, count. Okay, fine. Too. Just checking. Yeah, yeah I, I, I mean, I, I got no. I, I gave no John Le- I gave John Legend credit for it. Okay, so <laughs> apparently, I mean, so did everybody else. So he, he, you know, he could say I'm an Emmy award winning. You know, and, and people that win daytime Emmys, they're Emmy award winning. Mm. It's still an Emmy. 
I would claim it. If you Absolutely. won a daytime Emmy Award, would you say you're an Emmy Award winner? I would, Mr. Generous. Thank yes, you, Ellen. I would Absolutely. Definitely, I would yeah. definitely yeah. do yeah. that. So oh, yeah, you put the, the you put it on the shelf and back here, you know, you, oh. it goes to the credenza. It's on the mantle. It's, it's on, on the, the credenza. It's you one of those it. things. No one reads the plate; they just look at the statue. Right. Yeah. Exactly. If you have it, you have it. Exactly. If you were the janitor and you were given yeah. a Super Bowl ring with the Patriots or the Chiefs, would you not wear the Super Bowl ring? I'd take it. You know, you mentioned <laughs> that. I find that very interesting. So Monday Night Football, Troy Aikman is there with with Joe Buck. Yeah, Joe Buck, I think. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking. And he's got three of them. I was really surprised and kind of confused that Troy Aikman was not wearing a Super Bowl ring. He had no yeah. rings on. He's been divorced twice, but still. Yeah. Um, but I was surprised I that he wasn't. I left him with one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised he wasn't wearing one. So, so oh my goodness. Well, I, I don't know if you ever saw uh, Shaquille and Mila Kunis in an interview where Shaquille's wearing like his NBA ring. <laughs> and Mila looks at him and goes, what are you wearing? That is not okay. You can't just wear that. And it was just like. As big as her head. So It was so yeah. big. She's like, you can't. She's like, Shaq, you can't just wear that around. That's not okay. You wow. know, and I think the Super Bowl rings and stuff like that are, uh, are one of those things. And, and you know, um, you know, I, Louis, Louis Tiant wears a. a yeah. Uh, um, a World, World Series, Series ring, ring. Yeah. and and you know it, it it's it's super cool, but it's nothing like what Shaquille is. I mean, Shaquille is like, yeah. you know, his what well, what added. ring size are you like an eight seven? Yeah. Okay, Shaquille O'Neal is like a twenty six. <laughs> so just imagine what his ring looks like next to anybody else's. So it's you know, just not. Okay. I mean, I'll put it on. But yeah. there's but there's a, 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 <laughs> I'll wear it. I'll wear it on a chain. Put, yeah, put both of them in there. A sad commentary though is how many Super Bowl. I don't know about World Series rings, but how many Super Bowl rings are in pawn shops? Oh, so many. They've been. You know, so many oh, you yeah. said pawn shops. I was P -A -W -N. like, oh, what are we doing with this story? <laughs> no, no, no. P-A-W-N. Back to OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah. Pawn. So Robin Williams just missed out on the EGOT because he had a he had a show called Bengal Tiger at the Baghdad Zoo oh, yeah. that received amazing reviews. And he was, it says, Los Angeles Times says he was certainly be nominated for a Tony. So I wonder if they... They regret not giving it to him. Yeah. Now that he's dead? Yeah. That was 2011. You know, any, anytime I need to, uh, a little a little perk me up, I will YouTube. A perk. Um, perk me up. I thought it was a pick me up. Pick me up. Well, a perk, perk, perk me up. Perk, well, I like to give myself perks. He's what perky. was the word you said over there? The Inculcate. 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 Yeah. yeah. I don't know, Sneak I'm in. still not sure that's a word. Sneaking in. Still not sure that's a word. Would not be the first word I make up, I and it will not be the last word I make I up. Think, I can I promise you that. A, I don't think that's a word in Deland. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe not there. Yeah. Well, the fact that Deland is hyphenated is a confusing part to begin with. It's not hyphenated at all. I saw it in the paper the it's other day. Two words. <laughs> oh, fine. Okay. Yeah. So what's that little line in between? There's no little line in between. I saw it in the paper the other day. Maybe it was between yeah. two lines, but I didn't yeah. think it was. It's it the was same D line. People. It's yeah. probably the same people that put St. John's and put. The apostrophe? The apostrophe. Yeah, in I there. know. That's weird. Right. No, the D land is D E. Cap capital D E. Right. Capital L A N D. Okay. Uh, it's funny no hyphen. It was, just, it was just last week I saw it someplace and it was it's hyphenated. It's next to the water. Exactly. <laughs> it's easy to find. Yeah. If you get wet, you back up. Yeah. Um, but if, if you want to just laugh, just Google Jonathan Winters, Robin Williams on like the Johnny Carson show or oh, anything yeah. where the two of those guys are together. Even the more comedian stuff. But when when they're when they're doing it without guardrails, when they're on a, a talk show, and Johnny Carson was the, the epitome of that, um, it's just fabulous. John, Jonathan Winters um, just is hilarious, um, but. To put him on Mork and Mindy, oh. I mean that was the jump. Genius. That was a jump the shark kind of moment. But do you remember? But it worked. Do you remember his name? And Jonathan, when, do you remember Mork and Mindy at all? Yes. Okay. So I watched it on Nick at Night, but I was young yeah. enough that I just knew who Robin Williams was on it and just watched it for fun. I didn't know anybody. All else. Right. Because that was like when I was in sixth, seventh, eighth grade mm -hmm. is when Mork yeah. and Mindy was at its peak, like seventy nine, eighty, eighty one, when it was just really taking off. So ratings started to drop a little bit. They bring Jonathan Winters in. It bumped back up. But Jonathan Winters, 
from uh, orc, you age backwards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he came out as an as older, older person as a baby. And his name, you you got nothing? No. You think Julie would have been able to pull this one off? Cause, Maybe. All right. Mirth. There you go. Right. <laughs> Mirth was his right. name. That's great. So, I, I, didn't know I, I, remember th I remember things in retrospect because it's because I don't remember them now. Mm -hmm. But, oh, yeah, that's, that sounds right. <laughs> exactly. Yep. All right. We got to talk about our sponsors real quick. Coquina Coast Realty. Give me a call. 904-669-7901. Kaiser's Deli and Market. Don't forget about the market part of that. They have an amazing little market with a lot of local vendors. Yeah. Um, get over there. Try try the bollocks. They have a, a – what's your sandwich, Amanda? Bada bing. Bada bing. There you go. That's eight ounces of every cold cut imaginable. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's Genoa salami, capicola, uh, mortadella, and hot cappy. Could be called heaven. All right. Um, <laughs> what did you have last time we were there? I had you, you mix it up. Uh, yeah, you know, I was I was just craving a little old. There's time. no bad sandwiches at. Yeah, Kaiser's. I had a, I had a hot ham and cheese toasted with a little bit of mayo on it, and it was reminiscent of my days in college, where there was a, a cold truck that made a hot ham and cheese. Go figure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, and here here's the thing. You just took hot ham and cheese, and I went straight to. I don't know if you guys remember this, but Burger King used to have a ham and cheese, mm -hmm. hot ham and cheese sandwich. Do you remember that? I do. Yeah. So I, I don't know of any other fast food that's ever had a hot ham and cheese. There was, there was a while where the Burger King chicken sandwich was one of the best chicken sandwiches out there. St I, I still like it. Um, yeah. All right. Um, service is awful. Uh, if you get through that part, the food's still okay. Uh, St. Augustine Pirate Museum, you're not going to get bad service there. They're amazing people. 800 artifacts that just you've never seen before. They also do the Colonial Quarter, uh, the Bull and Crown, Taberna Bar. Um, these guys do everything in that region. They have the Spanish Quarter. There was a deep sigh there. I'm thinking of a cross-promotion between a couple of our advertisers. Okay. I think when the St. Augustine Distillery releases their um, new and up-and-coming rum that you've been teasing me with, yes, can we bring it to the Pirate Treasure Museum and go yo-ho-ho at a bottle of rum and just sit there and drink our rum in the Pirate Treasure Museum? Yeah. Cross, cross endorse? Well, I can put you Next right Next to the through. cannons. I can put, put you right through. <laughs> so, what, as long as I'm on behind the cannon and not in front of the cannon. <laughs> what, what's the thing where you have to stick your arms and head through? Oh, the yeah, stocks. the stocks. The stocks. The stocks. Yeah. I, can, I can get a straw, give you one of those little hats, and have you in the, in the, in okay. the stocks. I'm in. Drinking, drinking the rum. I'm not cheap. I'm just really easy. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I, uh, a Bear Kresge and Associates, best CPAs in town. Uh, uh, give Billy a call if you have any new business, any uh, you think you can do your taxes. You can't do it better than A. Bear Kresge and Associates. All right, Meehan's Irish Pub, wonderful place. Fabulous. If you have not eaten there, they have an amazing view. They have three bars and one. Great music, great, great people, and great food, along with uh, an amazing whiskey selection. And if you want whiskeys and if you want bourbon, then there's only one place to go, and that's St. Augustine Distillery and City Gate Spirits. Um, try their tasting tours. Uh, no one does spirits like these guys. Uh, St. Augustine Distillery and City Gate Spirits. All right. You know, hold on one what thing for what? for yeah. You know, we you brought up George Burns being mm -hmm. one shy, and mm -hmm. I said he ain't going to get it. And Kathy, Kathy, um, piled onto that and 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 acknowledged that. You know, there is an outside chance because Audrey Hepburn won her EGOT, mm -hmm. but she got it posthumously because she. She was dead. No, no, no. I understand okay. that. I understand that. I was trying to put the George Burns with the inculcated Tony, the grave with the Tony and 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 how possibly the vaudeville could play into it. So I, well, they got you know I, somebody's got to give him a lifetime achievement award after after the fact on the stage. Yeah, yeah. for his Broadway special where he talked about the invention of golf. My favorite yeah. special. <laughs> You know, just to go on a, a tangent, which we never do. Say good, um, say good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. <laughs> good night. Um, I was watching, you know, every now and again, Turner Channel Movie has just some interesting stuff on. And I'll tape it and I'll watch it later. And there was a show, and it, George Burns wasn't in it, but it was Gracie Allen. And man, she was playing a ditz, but was brilliant at doing it. You know, it's not an easy role to play. You know, it's fast-paced, it's scatterbrained, it, it's really great, great comedy. And I could not get over how good she really was and how scatterbrained her character was. Fabulous. But, you know, George Burns, we, we, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll try to see if we can bring him back from the dead. Yeah. He was God. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. It was great at God. I think so. He was good. Oh, right. God. All right. I got to give Kathy uh, credit on this when, when we're talking about ham and cheeses. Yeah. All right. Uh, the cheese wheel had uh, That's a, a, yeah, a hand, ham and cheese called the New Yorker. Yeah. And it was on an onion roll. Right. I'm telling you right now, that sandwich was fire. Are I they mean, gone? Or are they, I they're mean, coming they're, back. They're, they're, they are? That's what I heard. Yeah, I thought they were over on West King. Which I don't is know. A, a revival Anybody West King. who brings back the uh, ham and, the cheese, ham on and cheese on an onion roll, you you got me as a customer. Okay, I'm so, in. Uh, uh, Kathy, 100%, that was one of my favorite sandwiches in town uh, was the New Yorker at, at the Cheese Wheel. Okay, so I will look right. forward. I will look forward to that because a good, a good ham and cheese. Not throwing it out there, cheese. Kaiser, but you know you, you can call it whatever the hell you want. Ham and cheese on a on an onion roll with a little bit of mayo. The Mike Davis a, Show. We got to get it right. Yeah, <laughs> we got to get it. We're some cheesy. Money. We got to get him some. Yeah. Call it the Mike Lewis. <laughs> we got. <laughs> the names have been changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. evening with Mike Lewis. Yes. <laughs> so, um, all right. So on this list. I was like my one of my favorite entertainers of all time, and I was very very happy that he was on this list. But he only won one Academy Award, all right, and it was uh, for for the screen uh, best story and screenplay for the producers. Oh. I think this guy could be the most talented guy in my lifetime. Yep, George Carlin's up there. No, no, I got you. All right, but I. And I know a lot of people love, love, love Robin Williams, but I love Mel Brooks. Melvin Kaminsky. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, Kaminsky. Kaminsky. It is. That's so, his name. Yeah. No, no. Melvin no, Kaminsky. He, 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 yeah. cha he changed it. Yeah. 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 Because of the whole Red Scare. Yeah. So. Brilliant. Mike uh, Rowe has but, a podcast called The Way I Heard It, and he tells a story about Mel Brooks when he was serving in World War II. That's hilarious. If uh, you can find the Mel Brooks uh, the Mel Brooks version of that podcast or episode. They're only like seven minutes long. Is that They're where fantastic. he talks about going? Because who, who he got like $5 more a month if he was in the parent. Uh, okay. No. So he talks about how he hacked into the Nazi PA system because they would just <laughs> on repeat talk trash about right. how America was yeah, losing. Prop propaganda. He right. hacked into yeah, it Tokyo and played, played music. It was great. And what, and what podcast is that that I'm looking for? Uh, Mike Rose, The Way I Heard It. Okay. And each episode's like seven minutes. Uh, my favorite two episodes are the Mel Brooks episode and the Gene Roddenberry story. Ooh, Star Trek. But he tells it kind of like The Way I Heard It, where you don't know who you're, you don't know who you're hearing the story about until the end. Yeah, Mel Brooks is the uncle of a, a, a dear friend of mine who was a New York State Assemblyman for quite some time, um, a gentleman by the name of Todd Kaminsky, and Mel was his uncle. Okay. It still is his uncle, as a matter of fact. I was going to say, he's yeah. still, he's no, he still, still is. Yeah. He's still kicking, yeah, right? Yeah, he is. Yep, absolutely. So, and a, and, a, and a great a great love story there with Ann Bancroft. Yeah. So, no, Mel Brooks, to me, I'm just happy he lived in the same lifetime we lived in. So, and, uh, no, it just, uh, just such a funny and sees yeah. the world in a different, different light. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've talked about this. They're coming back mm -hmm. with Spaceballs is is being redone. No, mm -hmm. oh, that's awesome. So, and in, in I I think I've made this statement before when we did our our comedians and stuff like that. And I had this guy in my top top ten, um, who I see as this next generation of Mel Brooks. Is I see Seth MacFarlane, yeah, possibly oh. being the next step of Mel Brooks because of his view of how he looks at the world and what he gets away with oh no but that's, that's what mel did his entire career there's an envelope you know we're gonna push the outside of it yeah and then we're gonna go a little bit further the, the envelope's slightly open but we're gonna push that envelope even further and he's a good actor in his own right yeah that's what i'm saying yeah. I, I can see him singing voice what was that he has an excellent singing voice oh he, he, yeah i can see he's him brilliant. he really is being an egot guy on a lot of different levels interesting yeah so. Kathy says the cheese wheel is coming back to the Epic Movie Theater Center next month, and I heard it's in the De Leon's Pizza. Oh, the okay. De Leon Pizza is yeah. okay. All right, well, they gave it a good shot. Original Family. Okay. Oh, the oh, original. Okay. Oh, all right. 
We were just talking about Game going changer. to a Tuesday afternoon Original movie Family there. is opening a place in Epic Theater next is, month. Is it going to be What's called Cheese World? Did I they buy the so. name back? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's exciting. Good, because Julie and I were just talking about doing a Tuesday matinee. Oh, wow. Um, well, it's $6 Tuesday. Now you got to try the. Now you got to do the New Yorker when they come back. I will. If they don't bring that back, don't even come back. Don't. I will. Oh, I will. Chicken <laughs> salad's amazing. You've heard it here first. Thank yeah. you very much. Or chicken, or chicken salad. Bollocks. Chicken salad sandwich with a little bit of oil. Not going to lie. Amazing. We're, we're breaking news. All right. So, yeah, but Mel Brooks, to me, I was so happy he was on this list. Is there anybody on the list where you're like, how the hell did they make it? I got Whoopi on that on that category for me. Um, how well, did you know, there's make a it? couple of people that were just either producers or songwriters or composers that had a bunch of stuff and they would win for, you know, like across the board. But no, you know, Scott Rudin, who was a producer, won for producing a bunch of stuff. He went to kindergarten with my wife. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently she said he was a nasty guy in kindergarten. And How can was, you be nasty pull her pigtails? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> How can some, you be nasty? Of that I'm sure I'll get chided when she watches the show and tells me. You I, never met I, a mean I, six-year-old? Yeah. I did. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's several. Yeah. Okay. That's how. And I have no idea who Jonathan Tunick is. All right. So. And he won in 97. He's the only one that's not hyperlinked on my list. <laughs> years. Oh, Doug, go figure that one. Yeah. All right. Years in span of how far between the first award to the last award, okay, yeah, I have that one as Harry Belafonte, but it was as a non, right, non-competitive, competitive. right. So that one I have at sixty years, also as a non-competitive. Fifty-two years is Quincy Jones, right? All right, the shortest span that I saw, uh, um, so Jennifer Hudson. There, was four years, and it's also a non-competitive. Okay, and that's the guy that you have as oh, that Frank Marshall buying. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he had it as four years, but as far as competitive, the shortest time I saw was seven years. Well, you got Audrey Hepburn won in 1954, and then she ended up getting her in '94. So that was what's that? Forty years? 50, yeah, yeah. So there was forty years there. Helen Hayes got her first. Uh, Oscar in fifty three. Yeah, so and she's she forty five. Seventy seven. Yeah. Right. So she's forty five so, between. Yeah. So um We're running out of time. Can we just mention James Earl Jones? Oh, we gotta mention Sure. We gotta mention Darth. Yep. Yeah. May he rest so, in peace. What a talented, talented right. man. He's in the non competitive, but yeah. that I think that stinks because he's just so amazing. So I don't even care that he's in non competitive. But I he saw, won an honor honorary Oscar. I saw him on Broadway three different times. Nice. In a couple of August Wilson plays, Fences, and I forget the other one. Um, but then we saw him driving Miss Daisy with Vanessa Redgrave. Oh, wow. On, on Broadway. On Broadway. Okay. And Julie and he I. he wasn't in the movie. No. no. And Julie and I had front row wow. seats. Wow. That's so cool. We're sitting here, and, you know, and the car that he's driving is just, it's a steering wheel on a stick, basically. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's, you know, you imagine. he took you there. And we were. We were that camera is further away than we were from James Earl Jones and Vanessa Redgrave. What an experience! Oh wow. my goodness, the man is just riveting. I, and she was no slouch either, and she was elderly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my two top baseball movies, and probably my two of um, two movies that are easily in my top 10 are uh, James Earl Jones, Field, Field of the Dreams, Dreams sure. and Amazing. Sandlot. Yeah. So James Earl Jones was in Sandlot. He's, yeah, he, he yeah, was. I he gotta was, watch that movie. He was in. He was a, a, so the, the former re- Negro, ba- uh, professional Negro I gotta baseball. Watch that movie. He was the owner of the Beast, the dog whose real yeah. name, whose real name was Hercules. Hercules could come up. Mm-hmm. Um, could you come know, up. <laughs> could come up in trivia. Not gonna, not gonna Dead lie. Dead Poet Society, The Sandlot. Dead Poet Society, The Sandlot. Sandlot. I'm torn. Sandlot. I'm you the haven't Sandlot. seen either one. I, I may have seen The Sandlot a thousand years ago and have very little memory of it other than throwing out a catchphrase. You've got to catch both of them. Yeah, I you've know. Got, I, gotta, I know. I'm, I'm remiss for Dead Poets Society. All right, favorite James Earl Jones movie? Mm. Oh, it's probably Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams. I love that character. Yeah, yeah. 
the oh. arc that he takes is just so great from yeah. like the grumpy man that's about to assault Kevin Costner With to laughing bat. to yeah, yeah it's so when he stands in front of, when he stands in front of the truck mm-hmm. yeah. the VW bus yeah, yeah. all right field, so. field of dreams best character in field of dreams <sighs> so many great characters best there character are. in field of dreams Moonlight Graham. Moonlight Graham. Dot Graham. Yeah, that's Dot, good. Dot Graham. I can tell you tell you right now. I wrote. Really, really. Bert, I wrote a Burt Lancaster. Blo- right? I, when I Who's when that? I was doing yeah, Burt Lancaster, yeah. one of his last roles. Yep. It might have been his last yep. role. Gorgeous yep. eyes. But I can tell you right now, I wrote a blog when I was doing my walk. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was walking from here to DC, and I was just like, if I can only be half the man of Dot Graham. Mm-hmm. And that's, I mean, that's a goal everyone should have. Yep. It's just be a Doc Graham. Don't, don't be, you know, this this guy who lets shit get away. Right. Doc Graham maximized his life, and if you can be half the man Doc Graham is, you did mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, so Doc Graham is one of my favorite yep. all time characters. Yep. Obviously, I understand so, that. So, you heard it too. Yeah, you heard it too. Yeah, you heard it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? No, 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 no. You heard it. Yeah. No. Go, go the distance. Yeah. Yep. So such a go good the movie. distance. No, I didn't hear anything. Yeah. <laughs> so what was the name of the book? Uh, um, the boat rocker. What was it? Oh, it's, it's, uh, Phil Robinson wrote that, I believe. No, 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 no. It was his character in uh, in Field of Dreams wrote it. Oh. Was it? It was something like the boat rocker or something like that. Hopefully, somebody in the audience who are, uh, is is watching and can tell us. All and, right, but and, we're, and, we're, and Bobby brought up James Earl Jones as as the warlord and Conan the Barbarian. Yes, <laughs> with some yeah. seriously seriously long hair. So, seriously yeah. long hair. Strong strong acting there. Yep. Um, <laughs> guess what? We're out of time. Yeah. What a shame. We need yeah. a longer show. Oh, that was that was that was a great show. I thank you guys so much for bringing so much information. Thank Miss Amanda uh, for being our producer tonight. Yes, great. Sorry about the late start, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Okay, um, I can tell you right now, you guys, if you would, if you enjoyed the show, please hit that share button. Uh, get people out there. If you didn't like the show, share them and torture your friends. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, we appreciate you guys. Support our sponsors. Thank you so much for being our sponsors. Amanda, thank you. Lenny, thank you. All right. This Always is my Talks and Tangents. We'll see you next week at 634. Bye.